So welcome to Miranda Detailing's new shop. Now, actually we are at Simon's, which is home to Dr. Beasley's. So we are here taking a tour, checking stuff out, hanging out with Chris and Jim. And we have a special vehicle that we're gonna be working on today and going through all of the processes to wash and protect a matte vehicle. So here are the Mercedes G-Wagons that we're going to be working on today. We're actually gonna be working on one of them preferably this black matte one right here, show you how to wash, prep, and then coat with the new Dr. Beasley's Matte Pro coating. So before we get started on the G-Wagon, we're gonna go over the chemicals. Proper procedure, what chemicals to use, why we're using them to wash, prep, and then eventually coat with the Matte Paint Coating Pro kits. First step is going to be what? We're gonna start with, of course, we're gonna rinse the vehicle, cool the panels off, knock off the boulder, so to speak, and we're also gonna start then with our matte wheel cleanser. Now, what we have found is that regular wheel cleansers on this matte finish can kind of leave them chalky. So we found the need to develop a specific cleanser for matte wheels. So this is something that we'll use as a, in the pre-treat process and then agitate if necessary. Uh, but so we'll rinse and move straight into the matte wheel cleanser. And of course we're doing it indoors, so we're safe here, we're not in the direct sunlight. All right, next step. So now with deconning, we have to go chemical, correct? Exactly. So this is our chemical clay, if you will. Now, as far as when to decon, I'm gonna give you, you know, what is your process? And this is where I like to say the advice that Dr. Beasley's puts out there is a starting point, is a guideline, it is not gospel. So yes, we want you to hit, especially if we're doing a pro coating, we're gonna wanna hit it with a decon. Now, is it a rinse, decon, foam, rinse, foam again, and then contact wash? Or maybe you like to do a rinse, foam, and then go through the contact wash, rinse, and then decon, and then rinse it again? Fine, you yeah. can do that. However you wanna work it into your process. The thing to remember is we just wanna make sure we have safely removed all the decon. You know, So we want a very thorough rinse. Even for the DIYers out there that maybe don't have indoor uh, drain and stuff like that, you would do your wash process outside, bring the car into the garage, and then use Decon as a spray and wipe type product. And then I would recommend following up with a product called pH Neutralizer, which will then take this cleanser, bring it back to base, stop the chemical from working, and that way we know it's not gonna continue hammering away at that substrate. So ideally, in a professional process, we just make it part of the rinse, but it's also safe uh, for DIY use. But again, we have to hit it with that pH neutralizer afterwards to make sure we bring it back to base and stop it from working. Then we're gonna move into the matte body wash. So again, specifically formulated for matte vehicles, this has zero gloss enhancing elements. I didn't do it to you this, this time. <laughs> so again, the whole idea, as with everything Dr. Beasley's, it is imperceptible, meaning that it will not change the finish. It will not enrich in the finish. It will not darken the finish. It will leave the finish as it left the factory. So after we wash, we're gonna inspect it and see if there's any lingering contaminants because the key with MAP is understanding what it is. That matte clear coat is not flat and smooth because if it was, it would reflect light at a constant angle and that, thusly, it would be gloss. It is actually textured peaks and valleys. This means it's diffusing the light. What this means is, what I want to avoid is that, that stubborn dead bug that's on your front fender, instead of leaning into it and, ooh, let me just, let me just muscle this out, you're going to turn your peaks into plateaus. And this is how when you go to the, the used car lot, you know, at your Mercedes uh, dealer, your BMW dealer, and you see some matte cars and those little spots that are a little less matte than everywhere else, that's because dude sat there and just tried to hammer that out and ended up polishing his matte finish. So that's why after our wash, we inspect with our cleanser, and this is a water-based cleanser aimed towards organic contaminants like bug remains, bird droppings, sap, that sort of thing. So instead of upping my physical or my mechanical aggression, we're gonna up our 
chemical aggression to address that more stubborn contaminant and let the chemical do the work for us. The hardest thing as the detailer is to display the patience to let the chemical do the work and resist that urge to get in there and muscle it out. Now, could you use this like we use our APC rinse or pre-wash before you wash it? So Absolutely. either or would work. Absolutely, and this is something that is used for co cars before they're coated or after they're coated. So again, you have now completed the entire process and you're doing a maintenance wash on your car. And let's say there is just a, some, you went off for the weekend, you got bugs all over the car, it sat outside, got those bugs got sun baked on over that nice three, four day trip you took. Well, sometimes again, we need to up our aggression. And when it's with Matt, there's only one way we can up our aggression, not our physical, physical aggression, not our mechanical aggression. We only can up our chemical aggression. Okay, cool. So whatever your process is, usually for us we decon after we contact wash it and mechanically clay bar, you know, and, and clay mid it, whatever we're going to do mechanically, and then we'll go in and use the decon. Either or will work for you. You just kind of have to figure that out for your standard operating procedure. If necessary, we have Matte Paint Cleanser Pro. So this is what I like to call the sledgehammer. You know, this is when no other, you've upped your chemical aggression, you've upped your dwell times, you've done multiple applications and you're not making any progress. This is the sledgehammer. This is a solvent-based cleanser, so aggressive that we can only sell it in a four ounce bottle. Otherwise we couldn't ship it. So it's one of the things, still paint safe. You, anything beyond here, you're talking mineral spirits or thinner. So still paint safe. Of course, like any chemical, we never want any chemical drying on the surface, but this is something you get into. But again, this is our last resort. Okay, cool. For matte finishes, of course, no polishing, but you do need to go over each of the panels and make sure any little greasy bits are cleaned off with these cleaners. Any other weird issues on the paints, maybe some light stains that will come out. Um, we want to address them. If they don't come out, then they don't come out. That's just the nature of matte paint. But once we do all of this, then we will lay down that panel slash primer, and then we'll go into the coating. So with all the cleansing done, now we're moving on to the next step, uh, using this first. So this is the Matte Paint Coating Pro Prep. So this is going to prep the panel, but also lay down a foundation for the subsequent actual coating. So what are the benefits of this stuff? Again, we're ensuring the, uh, the most durable bond by getting this substrate as close to virgin as possible. You know, obviously any contaminants lingering on the surface are gonna hinder the adhesion of that ceramic coating. So this is gonna address that, but we're also laying down anchor points almost like a primer would, you know, in a gloss painting if we were using NSPs. So again, we're adding those anchor points down to serve kind of like a rebar to reinforce that bond of the matte paint coating pro to the clear coat. Now that comes with the kit only. You can't Correct. buy that separately. Correct. So that is kind of a specialty thing with this kit specifically. Correct. I mean, very light with it. You know, it's just, again, just enough. Like on this hood, I'm probably gonna go one, two, three, four, maybe five sprays. And then I'm just gonna go over the whole thing. It's not about leveling like that. It's just making sure we got it all over the surfaces that we're gonna coat. And really it's just about frequency, not force. Very little hand pressure. I'm just working it until I get back to a brilliant matte finish. So let's continue with the glass. That's gonna be our next step. We're gonna polish the windshield, and if the rest of the glass needs polishing, we'll do that as well. Let's focus on the windshield. Now, because this is brand new, we're not dealing with any type of heavy, heavy water spots. So whatever minor water spots that might be on here will be completely obliterated with this polish, but really we're doing this to prep the glass. All right, we are now on to glass polishing. We're gonna be using the new NSP GL from Dr. Beasley's. Now, it says NSP. If you're familiar with our videos, you know that we use the NSP polishes for priming ceramic coatings all the time. 
Now this is a new product for glass. Essentially it works the same way. Now this is brand new. We have very, very minor little water spots and imperfections in the glass. So we're really using this to prep the glass for ceramic coating. But let's show you how to use this product. So I have my little three inch flex polisher. This is great to use on windshields because it's nice and light and you can reach over. And we also have one of their new pads here. It's basically a ray, is it a rayon pad? Yeah. It's a rayon pad designed for glass. This can really remove heavy water spots on glass extremely well. So I'm putting only that amount. Is that enough? That's, that's fine. It's still be for that smaller area. We can always add more. It's always hard to throttle back, right? You can always add more. It's hard to put it back in the tube. All right, cool. So we're gonna start with just that little dab right there. And honestly, I mean, this is one of those things I've only used this product once. It's so brand new and I don't polish a ton of glass. Yeah, and I only polish it for prepping purposes, not really for um, scratch removal. Water spot removal, yes. I'll definitely polish glass for that. And so Phil, I know you and I were talking before about how unique this product is and the fact that the entire formulation is unique, unlike any other glass polish that's currently on the market. So yes, as you alluded to, it's, it's in NSP. So we have nano gel there. So this way we are not introducing contaminants. What also makes this product very unique is the, is the abrasive material. Now, without giving away, you know, any of our secrets, I will say that this abrasive material is very expensive because it is very effective. It is able to cut extremely hard surfaces. The other customer for this abrasive material is the United States military. And what they buy this abrasive material for uh, is to polish the canopy on their fighter jets. I didn't know this. The canopy on the fighter jets are actually made from sapphire crystal, much harder than glass. So this abrasive material is what they use to polish that sapphire crystal glass canopy. So this is why this is so much more efficient and not only prepping glass, but also cutting glass to get defect removal out of the glass. So it is something that is going to cut polishing and prep time significantly because of how aggressive this abrasive material is. Now, I know I was working with this stuff before and, uh, and it, it was a little, a little smeary, kind of like the NSP polishes. I coated right over it <clears throat> and it was fine with, with like a, the glass serum with no problems at all. That actually wipes off pretty nice. And I think key too is working it enough. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, you got some smearage, but that's okay. Now, if you want to get rid of that smearing, can you wipe this down with water and will that disturb no. the priming purposes? No, so I mean, purposes? just like that hack, you know, with NSP 45, sometimes if you get a little heavy handed with it, yeah. a little spritz of distilled water and you're gonna pull it right off the panel. Same thing here, a little spritz. Uh, but the other thing is, I mean, remember, especially the Glass Serum Pro, we're gonna come in, that's a two step, which does have a prep, so we can also just clean it up in the prep step as well. But yeah, a little DI or RO water. So the glass is polished, it's prepped with the new NSPGL. Now we're going to use the Glass Serum Pro kit to protect the windshield. I'm going to prime the towel and then I will spray it on here as well. So now we're going to get to coating the glass with the Glass Serum Pro. There's two ways of doing this and we're going to choose the pipette way because we don't want any overspray. Another way you could do this is it comes with the little pump sprayer, the little finger sprayer. So you could spray it onto the glass, spray it onto the applicator, apply it onto the glass. But since we are dealing with a matte finish, we don't want any mist, we don't want any overspray. So let's control that and use the pipettes instead. And you've seen me use these all the time. These are great, they're super cheap.
So with the windshield now done, let's get to coating the paint itself. So the application with this pro coating is very interesting. We're using water, just a mist, just enough to use the coating along with the water, not dripping or soaking or hosing it down, just enough. Interesting application. Line down the middle and, and dot in each corner. My yeah. particular brand of OCD. <laughs> So what I like to do, like you, I box out, so I got this real heavy bead kind of down the middle, and this way I'm pulling fresh product off of that every time I run by. And again, just because we just did the windshield, I didn't spray any water up here. I'm using the moisture I've absorbed into the pad to get in these places where I didn't want to get by our freshly coated windshield. And the nice thing about it, now this is a 100% solids, so you'll notice no flash. But the other nice thing is, it's a really long working time. So again, depending on humidity, we have a very high humidity day today, so we are gonna have to work a little bit faster, but still should be able to knock this out pretty quickly. I can't I'll have get, to get that yeah. for you, buddy. Yeah, it ain't <laughs> happening for me. I was trying to get over there, and it ain't working. And at 46 years old, I don't think I'm growing anymore. <laughs> and again, the other thing is, straight over the trim. It's matte coating. I'm not gonna turn anything glossy. I'm not worried about changing tones or anything. And again, up around the windshield, because we just coated it. I'm just gonna take my pad that's already saturated, but full of product, and just use that to get around there. Force is not your friend here. It's not about hand pressure. It's not about, you know, trying to power through it. It's all about frequency. It's using minimal hand pressure and just gently keep on going over the surface. And what I'm gonna point out to you here in a moment, and there's a reason why I only did the top of the hood and not around the edge, because I wanna show you guys that we are not gonna be able to tell the difference where the coating was applied to versus where it wasn't coated. I mean, when it comes to Pro, now it's not quite as much effort and as many towels as Nano Resin Pro, but still the matte paint coating Pro. What I tell guys that are doing this is generally figure about 50% more labor than our standard matte coating and twice as many towels. Let the laundry do the work. You can do it with less towels, but you're just gonna make yourself miserable. You wanna get through the process as quickly as possible. If your towel is overloaded, can you see these little, that spot, spot, oh, yeah. spot, spot, spot? My towel is overloaded. Uh -huh. So this was clean and I came over here to wipe it off and I'm putting more product down here. Time new to towel. flip or new towel. And this is what I'm saying, don't make yourself nuts. Just go through more towels. And look, boop, gone. No more spots. Then I can continue on with this spot. And again, you'll notice the very long working. Now, let's say you push too far. Let's say you end up with a high spot. The beautiful thing about our coatings, they are cannibalistic. Thank you, Levi Gates, for that term. I stole it from him. I will continue to use it until the end of time. That means that if we get a high spot and we catch it within a reasonable amount of time. So basically, if we pulled this truck out in the sun and did our final inspection and found a high spot, all we have to do is take our applicator that's saturated with product, go back over that spot, re-emulsify that spot, reactivate that high spot, and then we're just gonna boop, pull it right off. Now, if you enjoy a little bit more slickness, wait for the cure. You know, we want 24 hours dry. We want uh, one hour undisturbed. 24 hours dry, two weeks hands off. No washing, no quick detailers, no nothing. But after that, you wanna add a little bit more slickness to your matte finished vehicle that's protected by Matte Paint Coating Pro, bead, matte bead hero. Use that as your topper or your maintenance and you, you'll get some of that slickness. But you're absolutely right, because I mean, remember, you're never gonna get the slickness on gloss because 
This is not flat. It's not smooth. If it was smooth, I'd be able to see my face in this foot. But if you'll notice, Phil, so we coat it all up here on this horizontal surface. This is uncoated here. Anywhere along in here. And that's really the signature of the Dr. Beasley's matte coating. People talk about enriching the, the finish, darkening the finish. Our objective is, is simply factory finish. And again, the great thing about the matte coatings, no taping, we're just gonna go over everything. And the thing is, as you get more comfortable with it, and you'll stretch further and further, again, today, you're gonna have to work in small-ish areas, but on a normal day, you know, where you're not sweating and 90% humidity, all that kind of stuff, you're gonna be able to work multiple panels. But again, it's a self-leveling coating, so I'm not hugely worried about if I'm a little more heavy in one area than not. And again, definitely the water is gonna make it smoother, but here's my concern. The more we start spraying water, so, so we, we gotta pull in here, where's this gonna go to? And as we, I mean, how about when we were blowing out the, the rub rail? Like it's like off a, right off a boat, this rub rail. Yeah. So any water that drops in there, customer drives away, water sneaks out, it could potentially be carrying coating. It could potentially leave a high spot. This is my process that I've kind of developed over the last couple of years of demoing this product. Detailers have to find their process that works within their SOPs to be able to make it efficient for them. Correct. So for some detailers, it's going to be faster to use more water. Because maybe, you know, hey, I'm holding this car overnight. You know, it's not going anywhere. I'm not worried about the guy driving away and, and drippy high spots coming out. Exactly. So for my process, I lay on the water. It's a unique beast to work with a 100% solids coating. In some ways, it's more arduous. It's thicker to push around, it's thicker to pull off. But in many ways, it's very forgiving. Again, we have a very long work time. You know, compared to you know some other things that are out there where it's like, okay, in 35 seconds, you gotta wipe off, stand on one foot, hold one hand on your head and do a twirl. You know what I mean? It's just like, with this stuff is like, it's going to work into your process. How is your most efficient standard operating procedure? So the coating now is all applied. It is all done. We're gonna bake this overnight and then we're gonna see what it looks like tomorrow. Now, what about this coating and its self-healing abilities? The self-healing capability, whether it's our Nano Resin Pro for gloss paints or our matte paint coating pro for, well, not gloss finishes, whether it's satin or matte, it is self-healing within reason. You know, usually the first question is, well, what about rock chips? And to my retort usually is, you have to keep the paint on the car. So yes, when you're tailgating that gravel truck going down the expressway and you get whacked on that front bumper and that paint chip is now flying behind you on the expressway, yes, that little chip of paint is still protected by Matte Paint Coating Pro. So you gotta keep the paint on the vehicle. Also, just like the general rule, if you feel it with your fingernail, I mean, Phil, you know this, if it's gloss paint, if you feel it with your fingernail, it's not coming out, right? You know, so again, it's not gonna self-heal gouges that went through the clear into the pigmented base coat and possibly down to the metal. It's not doing that. But here's where it will absolutely save your behind when it comes to water spotting, etching, and towel marks and micro marring. This is giving you, again, it's not an impervious shield. You know, if you want a barrier between you and the rest of the world, go PPF. You know, a lot of people don't want to go full PPF, nose to tail. So what a hybrid solution could be for a lot of people is PPF on the front clip, self-healing coating under the remainder of the car. So that way, at least you have all the high friction areas with a physical barrier between the paint and the world. And then you have a self-healing coating to cover your behind, you know, roof and other areas, doors, tailgate and all that kind of stuff. If you get caught in your neighbor's sprinklers, you got time to make it home and wash your car. Now it's not put it through your neighbor's sprinklers and let it sit out in the sun for the next month because that's not very smart. It's not an impervious shield, but for people who really care about their cars and understand how to maintain their car, this is unlike any, this is that next level protection where again, the etching, you're not breaking out a buffer to remedy that etching. You are, you know, or maybe you have those customers, you know, who are a little overly handsy with their vehicles and like to put towel marks in your hard work. This is something that can save them from themselves. If I wanted to come back and stack another layer of coating on high friction areas, mirror caps, door cups, front you know, grill, that kind of stuff, 
I want one hour between layering the coating. Otherwise, I want 24 hours dry and two weeks hands off. No washing, no quick detailers, no nothing. Just let it get dirty, let it get pollen on it, just deal with it, and then wash it after two weeks. We wanna test this car tomorrow and test the hydro for bissing, all this kind of stuff. So we're gonna bake this thing and it's gonna be fully cured and ready to go. 15 minutes for panel, so however that long it takes to go all the way around the thing. So the G-Wagon is now fully coated and it has been only one day, but it was baked in the shop with IR lamps, so it is ready to go. We're gonna do just a quick maintenance wash on it to show you how to maintain this coating on this G-Wagon. This will pertain to any matte finishes with the either regular matte coating or the matte coating pro. So when it comes to hydrophobics on your matte finishes, you don't necessarily want the tightest beads possible because that can cause some water spotting issues. And it all depends on how you store the vehicle. As you notice, this can bead very nicely, but it also sheets the water off completely, leaving you very little water on the surface to dry up. That is actually what you want for any type of surface because that's gonna leave the least amount of water on there to dry and to leave any type of water spotting issues. So what do you prefer, beading or sheeting? Let me know down below and why do you prefer those? So here's the applicators crunchy. from yesterday. Very crunchy. Super crunchy. Look. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So the G-Wagon is now pulled in the clean room. We're going to dry it and also use a maintenance product to maintain this coating, which is what you want to do for any type of ceramic coating, whether it's on gloss paint or matte paint. This is the advanced coat Matt. The purpose of Advanced Coat Matte is to rejuvenate the coating and reinvigorate the beading effects. So we are adding nanotechnology to maintain and lengthen the durability of the coating that we are maintenancing. So fairly simple. It is a product that is a, a solvent based. So you're going to want to be fairly judicious with your application. We don't want to flood it. This kind of hood I'm thinking three sprays, maybe a fourth right in the middle, and that's about it. And then we'll just wipe it off as we're toweling off, and that's gonna be our maintenance. And the key to this is really long linear strokes to ensure total coverage of the area, then a flip and a buff, but we're just, instead of a quick buff like you're doing you're dusting your coffee table, this one we're gonna massage in a little bit until we get that brilliant matte finish. Matt, that's the signature of, of Dr. Beasley's imperceptible protection. So matte stays matte, gloss stays gloss, and satin stays satin. Now for the wheels, we're going to do something a little different. We didn't put the matte coating, even though you could, but there's another product we can use for the wheels. So this product here is called Matte Wheel Seal. 
So it's not a wet application, it's a dry application. If there's a couple of drips in there, will that make a big difference? No. Okay. So the idea of wheel seal, and in this case, matte wheel seal, is that it is a temporary coating that's going to trap contaminants, and then we come back for our next maintenance, it's going to release, and it's just gonna all fall off. So the idea here is we're gonna spray on, as always, bottom up, and we're gonna let it dwell on the surface for five, maybe even 10 minutes, again, depending on your environment. Oh, it's a white liquid, I did not expect that. Cool. What if it gets on the calipers? Or it's the, fine uh, on the calipers and it did, the it's, not gonna, it's not gonna harm anything. Like I said, it's a fairly uh, benign, like I said, it's not, it's not a coating in the traditional sense where it is like a ceramic paint coating where it's there to uh, uh, not allow contaminants to embed in, is pushing off. Again, this is a coating that is a temporary coating that's gonna essentially trap those contaminants and then release upon our next I like to start at the center cap, top, and then kind of work my way down. But I always, I'm always working on the face. The last thing I do is come in and work these areas behind here, because the last thing, again, just in case there's some contaminants, stuff like that, I don't want to drag those out onto the face of the wheel. So I kind of work from top, middle, out to the top, then down, but also keeping in mind that I want to work from the outside, get all this dialed in, and then come back. Last step is to get the inside again. I don't want to drag anything out to the front. So wheels are now done, they're sealed in, and they do have wheel seal for both gloss and matte finishes. Now we're gonna work on the tires using a matte tire conditioner, and then we're gonna work on some interior leather components as well. So, matte tire conditioner, one of the more misunderstood products in the uh, Dr. Beasley's collection. That's because I, I feel a lot of people buy this product because they are expecting a matte finish on their tire, which product is very much capable of. But what makes this truly unique, and unlike any other tire dressing, is that it is formulated without silicone, which is so very important when you have matte paint, or matte wrap, or matte PPF. Because if and when you get tire sling that's gonna go all over your matte paint, matte PPF, or matte wrap, that silicone is a filler that's gonna fill in that textured surface and turn satin or matte into gloss. So instead of making your life miserable of having to dig silicone out of your matte paint, all you do is use matte tire conditioner which will easily wash off in your next wash process. Just like most things Beasley's, you know we love the thickness. Sits right on top of the applicator instead of soaking into the applicator and that way it makes it onto the tire instead of into the applicator and waste it. If this is a little bit too much shine for you and you want an even more muted finish on your tire shine, well here's where you go take an old second towel, like this old crusty coating towel, and I can come back and just simply run it over and then knock down that level of sheen. So this way you get a truly customizable tire finish. So with the exterior done, let's move on to the interior. Now as far as cleaning goes, not a ton, but there is some stuff from elbows going on to the leather here. So we're gonna clean that and then protect all of the interior. So what type of surfaces do we have? Mostly leather and maybe some micro suede. We have carpet, of course. Micro suede on all of the headliner areas and on the sides here as well. So all of these surfaces can be protected. So we're gonna start with this, the fine leather cleanser. So that's gonna get rid of that stuff on the side of the door. Human DNA remains.
the leather is now clean. Now we can move on to the protection part. And if we needed to clean the micro suede, we have a cleanser here too. But let's focus on the leather for now. We're gonna use the Leather Lock Pro and the Dash Pro. So Leather Lock Pro, you guys, you know, I know the Mirandas love our Leather Lock. This is our water-based leather protection product that has a service life up to one year. You know, obviously, is it the driver's seat, the passenger seat, the back seat, kids, no kids, all that's going to affect that. But, you know, that's a wonderful product because you can buy volume in that. You can buy it by a gallon or five gallons even. This is a little bit different animal. Leather Lock Pro, so this is one kit intended for one vehicle typically, especially for a G-Wagon where they will polster leather on everything inside the vehicle. What you have here is a solvent-based two-step coating. So we have our Leather Lock coating prep and then our Leather Lock Pro coating, which is a five-year service life. So much more durability, but also super hydrophobic coating. So this is one of those things that is super impressive. It will be unbelievable performance to make your customers' lives easier, make your life easier maintaining your customer's car, but most importantly, as Dr. Beasley likes to brag about, imperceptible protection does not change the look, does not change the feel, does not change the smell, nothing. You know, it is exactly factory finish after you've coated the leather. So very similar to doing a coating on paint. We're gonna cross hatch it, we're gonna use an applicator, but no suede. You get the nice foam block and we're gonna use the spongy soft side of the block. Now, I do like to load up the leading edge of the, instead of going down the middle. And the reason I like to load up the leading edge of the applicator is to get down inside these valleys. Obviously, this, if anything spills, it's going to follow the path of least resistance, it's gonna take gravity, it's gonna take hold, and it's gonna fall into all these valleys. So we wanna make sure that we don't simply just gloss over those valleys. We wanna make sure we jam that applicator down in there, spread that apart, and get that applicator in there to be able to protect all those areas. So again, we got our little eyedropper applicator here. I'm gonna run it down the edge. And then I'm gonna just kinda of lay my bead down the middle like I normally would. self-leveling coating so I'm not necessarily worried about any leveling issues I'm more worried about total coverage over even coverage and again what I like to do spread apart and make sure you get the applicator down into these valleys to get all that coated and then what this is, which is nice as compared to the water-based product, is that you are going to be able to deliver this same day. So as opposed to a 24-hour cure time for leather lock, the water-based uh, product, this is a three-hour cure time. So three hours we can use and deliver this. And again, I don't have to worry about discoloring any stitching or anything like that because just like our matte coatings this is totally imperceptible protection if i get on any plastic or anything like that or any other services just make sure you wipe it off as soon as possible While Wifey is finishing up the leather, one last thing to do is to use Dash Pro. Now this is a dust repellent. You can use that on the dash as well, and this can stack on top of it. But this is going to be your dust repellent. Pretty cool product. Dash Pro is interesting. What we're gonna do here is, with this product, is gonna take advantage of the kinetic energy passing through the vehicle as it drives down the road. So those vibrations that are passing through this panel here, we're gonna take advantage of those vibrations and because Dash Pro is not allowing dust to embed onto the leather surface, it's just going to shake onto the floor and let gravity take hold and take it away. So, we always like to use a transfer technique, so either using an applicator or just a microfiber towel. I'm going to apply liberally. If you do happen to get it on any shiny, reflective surfaces, no big deal. Just wipe it off as soon as possible. But other than that, we're gonna let it hang on the surface for about a minute or so, give or take. 
let it bond to that surface, and then I can simply flip over and any residual product still remaining, I just give it a quick wipe off. And, and once again, we are leaving a totally factory finish. Another benefit to this product is also we're adding additional UV protection, so which is also very crucial. Not only is this product great right here on the dashboard, but it is incredible on the steering column. Any of these areas that don't get a lot of attention, but that are horizontal and tend to collect dust, this is where this product is really gonna pay dividends. And then if you have some detail sticks, use your detail sticks and get into the vent louvers and coat the vent louvers. I mean, that's one thing that always drives me nuts. So you wanna give your customer a truly first rate experience of your interior detail. This really you want to be as part of your finishing step. So like we have our maintenance, which is our advanced coat. Yeah. This is like, again, like we were talking the other day, like if you want to amplify the beading effects, go with Bead Hero. But this is also something to use between those advanced coat maintenances because this is so over the top on the ease of use scale. I mean, advanced coat mat takes a little bit more work to use it, but again, that's to reinvigorate the beading effects, rejuvenate the coating. This is just to give us a little bit of extra protection on top and really get us that incredible beading water action that'll get those beads flying off the surface. You know, that's what we like to say about Matt Bead Hero. It's got the, these are the fastest beads in the West, you know?